you know, it's like Wi-Fi is my drug and I needed rehab. <laughs> Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. Thanks for clicking on my face if this is your first time seeing it. It means a lot. My name is JC and I normally do story times on this channel, but today I just wanted to have an open and honest discussion with you guys in terms of my recent social media habits, the need for me to kind of like step back and assess my addiction to it and kind of determine if I wanted to make a return to social media. So again, this isn't a story time, but if you like videos like this, of just, just hanging out with me, like we're chit chatting, best friends over a couple of cocktails, then make sure to like this video and subscribe so you can join us for more future discussions because I definitely want to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions in the comments. But I won't, I won't dawdle. Let's just talk about why I quit social media and if I'll be returning. Oh my God, these bangs are already starting to annoy me. Okay, but let's get into some of the reasons first of why I quit social media. Reason number one, and probably the most obvious reason was I was spending way too much time on it. Now, I'm sure you can relate to this, but definitely during quarantine and the lockdown, there just wasn't that much to do. So I really saw my screen time skyrocket. Social media became not only a cure for boredom, but really a source for entertainment to the point that I was watching it instead of TV. I would have friends and family message me being like, did you see that new movie? Or did you check out that new Netflix show? And I would be like, I don't have time for that. Like I don't have time to sit down and start a new TV show or I don't have time to watch an hour and a half long movie. But at night I would sit there on my couch and just scroll. And then after two hours, I'd look at the clock and be like, ooh, I probably could have watched some better content instead of scrolling through 10 second long videos for a few hours. So while it did initially start off as just a form of entertainment, I will say that I was in the midst of exploring becoming a content creator. You know, I created my YouTube channel and I really needed to expand my other platforms. And with that comes some level of being an influencer slash content creator. So while I'd be scrolling through Instagram or TikTok, I would save videos or take screenshots of photos of things that I wanted to emulate, trending sounds, trending videos, or video concepts that a lot of people were doing. And I thought, well, I'm scrolling because I'm researching and I'm saving these ideas so I can put my own little spin on it later and get more followers. Um, but I wasn't doing that. I was just scrolling, saving videos, and then still enjoying the endless amounts of content of cats making breakfast or, or cute, long-haired banged cows you guys you guys get those tiktoks they're so cute but i was trying to justify my excessive social media use in the sense that i'm trying to make the same kind of content so i had to keep tabs on my competition but i wasn't i just wasn't the other thing is that once i did try to go to watch a new tv show i found that my attention span had dang it what's the opposite of skyrocketed pitfalled Dang it. <laughs> My attention span just took a hit and I could not pay attention to anything. I was getting told to watch these half hour long Netflix shows and even those were too long for me. I'm like, they're taking too long to get to the point. Let's speed this up. And it's because I was watching minute long TikToks where my attention span had just become so minute that quality content on other streaming platforms to me became boring and I just got so impatient. Now my social media habits also extended into my life and work productivity because I found myself wanting to pick up my phone and scroll on Twitter or scroll on Instagram in between breaks for work, but they weren't actual breaks. It was me just kind of losing focus, again, losing my attention span, grabbing my phone and scrolling. And before you know it, a half hour had passed and I'd be like, ooh, <laughs> I should probably get back to work. So I was just using social media as kind of a crutch in those in-between moments of life and work. And it was really starting to affect my productivity. I wasn't getting a lot done at work and I just felt like I was behind in life because I had no time. I had no time to watch TV, let alone create more videos or go out and explore the city. But really it was social media that was taking up all of my valuable time. Reason number two, while I quit social media, and again, I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, was I was developing a lot of really intense feelings of inadequacy. You know, you see on Instagram these super edited photos of women with beautiful bodies, with beautiful faces. You see these influencers who are living wonderful lives. They're out traveling the world. They're going to high-end restaurants. They're gathering with friends. 
I really started to feel like I wasn't living the life that I wanted because I would see all of these other glamorous lifestyles. And so I just kind of started getting down about my own life in the sense of, dang, I wish I could just hop on a plane and go visit my friends on the other side of the country, or I wish I could drop a cool hundred dollars on a nice salmon dinner, or I wish my tummy looked like that in a swimsuit, or I wish I could wear that dress, but I wouldn't feel confident with my body in that. So I really started to feel not only super inadequate, but a lot more self-conscious than I ever have been. I was starting to body check a lot, even alone in my apartment, not going anywhere. I would just stand in the mirror and look at myself and think, why don't I look like those other girls? And I would kind of assess my life and be like, well, what's stopping me from traveling? Oh, it's, I don't have the money to do it. I don't have the time, you know? And I just started comparing myself to all of these people that I didn't even know. And I think what really got to me was the fact that I didn't have the desire to want to post photos about my life. I didn't want to share that I was just down the street at the deli on my Instagram stories when people that I followed were off in Bali riding elephants and getting massages on the beach. I didn't want to post unedited photos of myself because I thought, oh, I really don't like the way my tummy looks in this photo, or I really don't like how round my jaw looks. That to me, it's important to not post super edited photos. But because of that, I just didn't want to post them at all because I'd become hypercritical of a lot of my insecurities and really fixate on those. So social media really started to mess with my perception of not only how my life should be, but how I should look, how I should act and what I should be doing. That I really did have to take a step back and go, okay, this isn't real life. This isn't real life, you guys. So I think that was another reason why I wanted to quit. Reason number three while I quit is that I started to notice it really impeded on my personal life. Now again, this was just because I was really in the zone of content creation. I was really in the mindset that I need to increase my followers so I need to post on my stories every day. I need to do a reel or two every week. I needed to continue posting on my Instagram feed, on my TikToks, on my Twitter. That I became that person where I would hang out with friends and I'd be like, wait, nobody take a sip of your cocktail yet. We gotta take a boomerang. Or wait, 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 don't take a bite of your food. I need a really cool picture. Hang on, let me, uh, let me just move this mimosa into the background. Let me get the eggs. Don't pop the egg yet. We're gonna, we're gonna get a, a nice slow-mo video of that. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I became that annoying friend where it almost felt like I was trying to hang out with people for content, not because I actually wanted to hang out with them. Now, this isn't true necessarily, but I definitely kind of started to feel that subconsciously when I would want to attend events or buy tickets to activities just for the sake of posting about it, just to show that I was living this really cool life. And I thought, that's not, that's not great that I feel the need to go to something or hang out with certain people and do certain things just so I can get a photo of it and post it to my Instagram stories. I also didn't like that I was starting to think about activities in the form of what I would wear and what kind of photos I would get. So what I mean by this is I would, you know, message some friends or family, be like, hey, I saw this really cool area. You want to check it out with me? Whether it was a hike or a really cool backdrop or some scenic location. And what I would do is I would go on Instagram and I would research that geotag and see what other photos people were taking. So I could pre-plan what angles I wanted to get, what backdrops I wanted to get, what outfit would look best against the scenery, how I wanted to wear my hair. And I was like, I am planning for my photos and not planning to enjoy myself and create a wonderful memory. And that's not good, you know, that's really not good. And again, I would just like to say that throughout this whole video, this is just my experience. This is not necessarily a universal experience with social media. You may be able to relate to some of the things that I'm talking about, but a lot of these issues really stem from the fact that I was trying to become a content creator. I didn't necessarily have these feelings of inadequacy or kind of using social media to show how I lived a great life. It really was recently when I did start my YouTube channel and want to grow my audience. So I just kind of wanted to mention that. And reason number four and the last reason that I wanted to quit social media was that I did not like that people felt entitled to my life. And what I mean by this is it was kind of twofold where I would go and see people who I haven't seen in a while and I would start telling them a really cool story or something that I did recently, an activity, an event, somewhere I traveled. And they would kind of stop me. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw you post that on Instagram. Yeah, I know. And I'd be like, well, that's not that's not the whole story. Like, sure, I posted a cool photo of it, but you know, let me kind of continue the story that I was gonna tell you. Conversely, I would tell people about, you know, something really cool that I did or perhaps somebody who I had hung out with and I would start telling them this story and they'd kind of be like, oh, I didn't see you post about that on Instagram. Why didn't you post about it? Like, that's kind of cool. Why didn't you let us know? And I'd be like, well, I don't, 
I don't know, I don't have to, I don't have to post every single thing that I do. Like just because I did something cool doesn't mean I have to share it with the world. This also kind of extended to a lot of the modeling gigs that I've been doing where I would tell people, yeah, I just shot a commercial with this brand or I just did a social media ad with this brand. And they'd be like, well, you didn't post about it. Like, why didn't you tell us? Like, that's awesome. And they were happy for me, but it still bothered me that like in order for it to have happened, I would have had to post about it. And it kind of deflected away from, you know, the victorious feeling that I was feeling that this happened. And then it kind of went both ways where I would be talking to somebody and they would give me some big crazy news or something that they did, you know? I think I was talking to a friend recently where they were like, oh yeah, I just got back from Italy. And I was like, Italy, that's insane. Like, why'd you go to Italy? What'd you do? Where'd you go? And they were like, well, I was posting all about it on my Instagram, like you didn't see it. And I'm like, sorry, like I didn't catch your stories those couple of days or sorry that, you know, maybe you were later in my Instagram story feed and they would get offended if I didn't see them. And so I really didn't like that I was becoming dependent on communicating with others just through social media. Ugh. Okay, that was a little bit long-winded and a little bit ranty, but just to recap, the reasons why I quit social media was I was spending way too much time on it. I was developing a lot of feelings of inadequacy and self-consciousness. I felt like it was impeding on my personal life and that I was prioritizing content over actually creating memories and having fun experiences. And I felt like people were becoming a little too dependent on communicating with me through social media. So after assessing the aforementioned items of why I needed to quit social media, I had to go about the how. So here's how I quit social media. First, I took a look at all of the platforms I was on and I really had to determine which ones were the biggest time sucks of all of my life and which ones I could still, I could still keep around because they were a little bit more passive. Now, I had to keep Facebook because I needed it for work, but I'm not a big Facebook user anyway. I kind of just hop on there every now and then to see the headlines and then I hop off after a few minutes. So that one wasn't as big of an issue. Similarly is Twitter. I love to tweet. I'm not tweeting like a multiple times a day or anything, but I just don't follow enough people to get really stuck on Twitter and endlessly scroll. So I was like, ah, Twitter, uh, th that's not really a huge reason for why I wanted to quit social media. I don't use Snapchat cause I'm not 20 years old anymore. So that left TikTok and Instagram. And after kind of doing my assessment, I realized, oh, these are the bad boys of my life. So TikTok, I kind of thought about it and I was like, there's no way I can reasonably keep TikTok around without absolutely wasting my life away. So I just completely deleted the TikTok app off my phone. I didn't delete my profile, um, but I did delete the app because I knew there was just, there was just, it was just calling my name. It was like whispering to me like, JC, just five minutes of scrolling. And then it's kind of like, you know, in Greek mythology where they have that one room where they eat the flowers and then before they knew it, they spent five years in that place that's TikTok. So I just completely deleted the app and I feel a little bit bad about it because I, I didn't tell anybody. I didn't do the whole, hey guys, I'm hopping off social media thing. I just completely deleted it. And there were some people still sending me a lot of videos and I feel bad that they were probably like, wow, JC's not even responding to the beautifully curated content that I'm sending her. <laughs> I guess I'll just stop. But it was just really important to me that I cut that out cold turkey because that was the biggest perpetrator of wasting my time. Now I looked at Instagram, I really assessed my habits and I determined that I could keep Instagram, but to an extent. So I really enjoy watching my friends' stories. I enjoy following all the updates on their lives, their big news that they post on there. Where I was really losing all my time was following a lot of strangers' content, going onto the Explore page, going onto the Reels, and using it as a form of entertainment from people I didn't even know. So that's where I determined I could cut out. There was a guy just doing a wheelie down my street. So rather than just delete the app completely, what I did was I downloaded an app that would control my screen time. I believe it's called, it's called Stay Focused and they have a free version, but I purchased the, I think it was like five bucks or something to where I can actually set time limits on all of my social media platforms. So I only set one hour a day for Instagram. Now you're probably thinking that's a lot. Who spends an hour a day on Instagram? <laughs> 
I do. Um, and that's actually a huge decrease in the amount of time I was spending on Instagram. I know, I know, I'm one of those people, but that's why I'm confiding in you guys, because you're my friends. But I set it to an hour a day, and I really noticed how quickly that was going, because I would hop on the Explore page or go onto Reels, start scrolling, and I'd be like, oh no, that was 15 minutes, and I haven't even caught up on my friend's story. I haven't even scrolled through my main page to see who's having a baby, or who got engaged, or something. So I was really forced to kind of delegate my own time and determine how I wanted to use that hour. I also set time limits on all my other social media platforms, and that was also really insightful in showing that I don't spend that much time on Twitter, on Snapchat, on Facebook, but it really was Instagram and TikTok that were snatching away all my free time and just making me a zombie to social media. So one thing that I did forget to mention is that on Instagram and TikTok, I wanted to take a complete posting freeze. So I was there, I was there lurking on Instagram, but it was really important to me that I wasn't posting anything. And this was again, to kind of redevelop those habits of not going somewhere and feeling the need to post or not having these photo shoots in my apartment because I was behind on content. I kind of just wanted to live my life and not have to worry about posting a photo to either of those platforms. So now let's talk about what happened when I took this social media break. I became a meditating zen hippie guru. No, I'm just kidding. What I did have was a lot more time for myself, you guys. I cannot even begin to express how much time I had for myself. And it's so obvious. It's like, yeah, JC, you were wasting your life away on social media. I know. But you guys, I read eight books. <laughs> like, oh, there's where my time was going. I read eight books. Um, they were all varying from like cheesy romance novels to like self-help development and you know, progressing your career. So they kind of like ran the gamut there. But I read eight freaking books. I still didn't start any new TV shows or movies because I'm just not a TV or movie person in that sense. But I did find new ways to kind of cure my boredom. I would see that my screen time was running out for Instagram. I couldn't really hop on TikTok. So I'd be like, oh shoot, well I guess I'll go for a walk and get exercise. Blech. And then I really enjoyed going for walks. I also found new silly little hobbies, like I really enjoyed doing puzzles lately. I would edit some videos and I would get things done around the house. So I found that I was becoming not only more productive in my personal life, but also in my work life. I started noticing that just when I would kind of lose focus at work, I would immediately grab my phone and go to scroll and boom, TikTok wasn't there or I only had five minutes left on Instagram. So I really noticed not only how addicted I was to using my phone to fill those moments, but it also showed me how much I needed to focus and it really made me look at the task at hand that I was doing on work and be like, you can't use your phone, can't go on social media. So just, just finish, just finish your assignment, JC. Just finish your assignment. Another really cool thing that happened was that I started living for myself and you may not have known this, but I went on six trips this summer and that's because I barely posted about it, but I enjoyed so much of my time there. I went to San Diego, I drove up to San Francisco to see my best friend, I went on a Denver camping trip for my birthday, I flew out to St. Louis and then road trip to Cleveland and Boston. I had a wonderful summer kind of reconnecting with people who I haven't seen over the past couple of years due to COVID. And it felt so nice to not have to worry about content, to not have to tell people to smile for photos just because I needed to post that I was with them. It was honestly so liberating that I could just live my life and make these connections with people without having to worry about content. So this also leads me into one of the other great things that happened was reconnecting with people and strengthening those bonds. You know, I found myself a lot more engaged when I was out to lunches with friends, when I didn't have to worry about getting a boomerang of me popping up Eggs Benedict. Cause those things, they, they pop and they ooze. It's really good. It felt really nice that I could just focus on our conversation and not think of, okay, where can I, where's a good backdrop to get a good photo of us so I can post about it. It also made me call people a lot more. You know, if I couldn't grab my phone and hop on social media, I found myself instead grabbing my phone and calling my grandma, you know, calling other family members, other friends, and really reestablishing those bonds to not only fill the time, but to also realize that I am a lot more engaged without being on social media. Oh, I tell you, I just got, I feel like I got galaxy brain that was just exploding with knowledge, not only from, from spreading the book cheeks of eight different novels, but also that I feel like my attention span really did return and that I was just a lot more focused and engaged on talking to people, on establishing new connections, maybe out on the gigs that I was getting, but just not using social media as a crutch to fill time and to keep me entertained. And 
I just think that is so beneficial and it's just something that I highly recommend to everybody. But now you may be wondering, but JC, I followed you on Instagram. Should I go unfollow you? Or I love you on TikTok. Should I just go and unsubscribe? Unsubscribe on TikTok? I don't think that's a thing. No, you should not because will I return to social media? The answer is yes, but I'm gonna give you some reasons why and maybe some, some contingencies in there. Number one, because you do need to have a presence on other social media platforms in order to excel in the entertainment industry. So yes, one of the reasons why I quit social media is because I was creating content for it, but that is one of the reasons I will be returning. I do a lot of modeling gigs on the side. I am trying to, I don't know, get in the biz in that sense. And so many casting directors say, send me your Instagram so I can see a recent photo of you. I just recently had somebody say, send me your Instagram so I can confirm that that's what you look like. And they responded, they said, you haven't posted since April. Can you send me a more recent photo? And that's when I realized Instagram is a very important tool in kind of maintaining it as a portfolio for my modeling gigs. So I will be continuing to post there on my feed in a very edited and stylistic way because it is my portfolio. It is my resume. It is my visual representation of why people should hire my face to be in their commercials. But in terms of Instagram stories, I think that I'm going to I'm gonna lay off a little bit. I'm not gonna focus on getting five pictures at every event that I go to. You know, if I take a trip, I'll get photos when I can, I'll post that I'm there, but I'm definitely not gonna focus on getting those boomerangs, having all my friends and family smile for photos or grab my camera and make sure they get that perfect shot of me. I definitely don't want that to be the focus, but I do still want to keep you guys updated on my life and what I'm up to because that's what I enjoy about social media. The other reason I will be returning is because Similarly, piggybacking off that is I do enjoy keeping up with my friends' lives. I enjoy getting their big news, their big announcements, and seeing what other things they're up to. But I do think that that also means I will have to wean off of using social media to follow strangers. I don't know these influencers. I don't know these bloggers. I don't know the people on my Explore page. I think that moving forward, I should not focus on the content of strangers and instead use it to maintain those relationships that I have with old friends that I'm trying to stay connected with. I also think it is super duper important to maintain social media for social justice reasons. You know, I am developing a platform. I have an audience. I have friends, family, other relationships that they really value my opinion. And even no matter how minute, how minuscule or how small your audience may be, you can make a difference with your own opinions, with sharing certain things about social justice reforms. And I think it is super important to not only share your voice and share your opinions, but try to encourage other people to participate in making a change for the world. You know, whether it's Black Lives matter or anti-Asian hate or climate change, sustainability, you have a platform that you can use to influence others to make a better change in the world. And I think that is something that's so invaluable that I would be a fool to give that up and to not use my voice for the greater good. So that is absolutely something that I will continue to do on my social media platforms. If you don't agree with me, you know, don't follow me on those. Keep me on YouTube, but I will also be leaving some links below in the description box of some reforms, some movements, and other things that really mean a lot to me, and it would mean a lot to me if you check them out as well. So again, social media is great for social justice and using your platform to make a change in the world. And lastly, I will continue to use my Stay Focus app to limit my time spent on these platforms. So I'm gonna keep it as an hour, maybe even less on Instagram, and really kind of delegate that time to either posting, engaging with my own comments, or just focusing on my friends' content and not the content of strangers. I'm probably, if I'm being honest with myself, I'm probably gonna have to limit my TikTok time to 10 minutes a day, and that's enough to just like, post a video, comment a couple of times, and then I'm getting kicked off because TikTok, TikTok's a rabbit hole of focus destruction. For me, for me at least. So that was an overview of why I quit social media, my results of going on a social media freeze, and some of the contingencies upon returning to my own platforms. I know this one was kind of long and probably not that funny compared to a lot of my other videos, but I think it's a very important conversation to have. And I definitely encourage you all to assess your social media habits or perhaps some of your other habits that might be limiting your productivity, affecting your self-esteem, 
or kind of preventing you from living the life that you wanted. Because I think just from kind of taking a step back and assessing why I was feeling all of those these things, I can make an even stronger comeback and kind of use it to my advantage to live a more productive life, but still keep in contact with others, still use it as a portfolio, and every now and then use it as a form of entertainment. Because I am just, I'm just not a TV and movie person. I like to scroll, and so I think it's fine to treat myself every now and then. But just not become addicted again. That's the plan, that's the plan. I'll keep you updated if I fail. But I thank you guys so much for sticking around for this one. And again, I would love to hear your opinions in the comments, your thoughts on social media consumption and how it may have affected you during the lockdown especially. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next video. Toodles! Oh my God, shameless plug. I forgot to plug my sister. You guys, my sister makes earrings. I'll leave a link below. She's got so many styles. They're so trendy, so cute, so many colors. Go check her out. Earrings by Jamie Noel. And she didn't pay me to say that. Love you, sister.